Hey guys, this is Tom L. with Tom and Christian Channel. I have a terrible cold. Um, it, it's a, it, I had a one day incubation period, so uh, I'm not doing so good with that. Oh, wow. Um, that's why my voice sounds really bad. Um, however, um, I came on here. I was, I was let to come on here. Sorry, my voice isn't the same. To talk about tithing because one of my friends I never thought in a million years um, who is a pastor I'm not going to name names um, he decided out of the blue that he was going that his messages were from the Lord about tithing and about how the Lord is really upset that people aren't tithing and how the Lord is really upset that um, how if you want the curse of if you want the curse of um <clears throat> poverty lifted from you, you have to be a generous giver. That is not of the Lord. For we are not under the law anymore. When we are under grace now, if the, if if you're under the law, then there, then you're fallen from grace. For where there is law, grace is no more grace. So not only that, but there are people out there that are seriously, um, they they would give whatever they could, but they can't afford ten percent. They're, they're, they're about ready to lose their house and it really it really damages their faith to hear that God will curse you if you don't give people money 10% it's not only is that not true and not only not only is that joke because that was created for the Levites because the the 11 other tribes were supposed to give 10% of whatever they had to the Levites to dedicate their entire lives to God and learning about God and, and doing sacrifices, animal sacrifices for God and protecting the Ark of the Covenant. So God said that the rest of the 11 tribes were going to, going to support them. So when you hear about tithing and you hear people say that God's going to curse you if you don't give 10% of your money, it's not about money, it was about agricultural. <clears throat> it was about taking care of them, supplying their needs. If, if someone says that God, God told me that God's going to curse you and and if you don't give if you don't give them money that is not the lord and i know this man and i know that he's just misled and when your heart's not right with the lord he when your heart's not right with the lord the satan can come in and he'll give you the message that you want to hear in his instance because he wanted more money for his ministry satan is more you know he turned off his heart to god and trusting god because he didn't at that point at some point, he stopped trusting the Holy Spirit to provide for him, and he started trusting, in, and he started, you know, he started wanting more money. It wasn't enough. What God was providing for him wasn't enough. So he wanted. He started reaching out to other people against the will of the Holy Spirit. So naturally, next time he goes into prayer, not being right with God, any spirit, Satan or anything, if you're not with God, you're against him. Of course, that spirit will give him the message he wants to hear. So he gave him the message that God will curse anyone who doesn't give this man 10%. And he comes on websites and he scares people into giving him 10%. And that's just not right. I hope he repents. I really do. Because I know he is a child of the Lord. At least he was. It's called backsliding or slipping. He's slipping because he listened to the wrong, he listened to the wrong spirit. And now he's being led down the wrong path. And he's doing a lot of damage to people. Just like the smoking videos, which I don't know that much about. Um, if you tell people that God's not happy with you unless you give 10% of your money or more, and you're cursed, let me tell you something. If you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, that's a blessing. If you're being led by God, that's a blessing. If you're doing the wrong thing, He'll chastise you. He's not going to send some guy out there to tell you that God's going to curse you unless you give Him more of your money. Even if that person has good intentions and asks to hear, thinks they're hearing from the Lord, that's not from the Lord. I understand the Bible. I have the Holy Spirit inside of me. I, I confirm that that message was not from the Lord. So, just be careful what you listen to. In his case, he wasn't being a money grubber. He's just hurting for money. I understand that. But Satan will use whatever he can. Iniquity knows no bounds. So, just be careful what you hear. That is Galatians 5.18 But if ye are led... But if ye be led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Tithing is the law. Um, 
Romans 4.15 Because the law worketh wrath, for therefore where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore it is of faith, uh, that it may be made by grace, to the end that the promise might be sure to all the seed. So, Romans 6.14 for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. But what then shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace. God forbid. So, you're, you're when when you're when you're led by the Holy Spirit, um, over if you have the real Holy Spirit, if you've truly given your life to Jesus Christ, if you truly cried out to Him recognized him as the Son of God, recognized that he died on the cross for your sins so that you don't have to go to hell anymore, so that you can enter the gates of heaven, assuming you stay on the narrow path, he will guide you. He will help you get rid of your sins. He will lead you to the Bible so you understand. So so you, you should be reading your Bible if you have the Holy Spirit so you understand so that well, that way you're not destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Not Galatians 5.4. Christ has become no effect unto you who whosoever are justified by the law. Uh, ye are fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. So, I mean, this is talking about circumcision because that was part of the law, but so is tithing. That's the point. And if someone says they'll curse you, but you're blessed, you're blessed by the Holy Spirit. You can't be cursed. Um... First Corinthians sixteen. If you're following the Holy Spirit, God's not gonna curse you, he's gonna chastise you. Sixteen, one and two. Now concerning the collection for the saints, I have given you the order I have given an order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him, that that there be no gatherings when I come. So Second Corinthians nine seven. Second Corinthians nine seven. Oh, come on, focus. Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or out of necessity. In other words, you know, saying that you have to give ten percent, otherwise you're cursed by, otherwise you're cursed by poverty, or, or um, saying that. Saying that God will curse you if if you don't give ten percent of your money all the time to to a church that's law. Um, so not grudgingly, not out of necessity. Law is necessity because you're saying that God doesn't God isn't pleased with you unless you do it. For God love a cheer, for God loveth the cheerful giver. And God is made able to make all grace abound toward you that ye always having sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. <sighs> Galatians five one. If it'll let me, stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. The law is the yoke of bondage, tithing is the yoke of bondage. If you feel like you're if you feel and, and this is a mistake with with a lot of Christians they feel that if if someone's not instantly changed, there's no way that God could be possibly working in them at a pace they can, a pace they can handle because they don't understand because they may not have actually been saved themselves, but they think they are. And so, and so these people who think that they're saved, but they really are just religious and they haven't really come, given their whole hearts to God, so God isn't really working in them. So they don't understand. They don't understand that the people that probably are working through God even though they might have a few things wrong with them still, eventually the good work that, that was made in them will be finished. That's Philippians. Um, I'll get to that one too. Romans 8.14 For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. In other words, you don't fear being cursed if you don't give 10%. But ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, and the Spirit itself bears witness in our spirit that we are children of God. So, so in other words, if someone tries to tell you that you're not right with God if you don't get if you don't follow the law, the Levitical law, 
Oddly enough, hypocritically, they're not Levites. So let me try to find. Let me try to find. Um, that's my son crying in the background. I know my time is short. Then, for my time is short. I can find it. Philippians. Oh, boy, buddy, I can hear him. So if you're, okay, so being confident in this very thing that which we, that that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Who is he? He is, he is the Lord God Almighty. Um, so ye are all partakers of my, uh, okay, so what this is saying is that, you know, if you're stuck in a sin, if you're stuck in bondage, if you're stuck doing something, and in this case, in this case, it's not directly related to tithing, but this has been a problem. Um, if you surrender it to the Lord, if you if you trust that the Lord can help you, because a lot of these things only the Holy Spirit can work with you with, assuming you have the Holy Spirit, assuming you're trusting God, assuming that you're walking the narrow path and you're honestly doing what, the, what you're led by the Spirit. Some prophetically, some people talk to God, some people are led by feeling and gut emotion, whatever it is. You just know... Um, you're just led to stop sinning. You're just led. You just feel like you shouldn't be doing something anymore, and it lines up with the word of God. You feel starved for the word of God. You know, the, God will finish the work in you, the good work in you, if you if you remain loyal to God. If you if you don't give up, if you don't give yourself all these prayers, if you surrender to God, God knows your heart. If you really want to give that thing up, like smoking or doing drugs or lying or cheating or stealing or whatever it is, He will help you. He will guide you. It will get done. He will help you. If you surrender to him, you'll be amazed. I've, I've been able to get over so many things. So with that, you guys take care and have a good one. And don't you dare let anyone throw a stumbling block in front of your faith, in front of your relationship with God. Work th all things out with God and check the scriptures. Don't take anyone's word for it. And don't let someone guilt trip you into, into doing something that you shouldn't or make you stumble or to make you feel like you're going to be left behind or you're going to be thrown in hell because you didn't do what that person said. All right, you guys take care and have a good one.